Welcome back, guys, to another episode of my Borussia Mönchengladbach career on FIFA 15. Things are going well at the moment. We're doing good in the league. We're on track for that European spot for next season. We're also into the quarterfinals of the Duce Pokal. You're going to see highlights of that game coming up right now against Bochum. We've also just had the winter break. If any of you guys missed that episode, be sure to go back and check it out. The, uh, the transfer window was open. I managed to sign... Jetro Willems from PSV for the sum of 8 million. I also managed to sign two other players, but they won't be joining us until next season. I managed to get them on pre contracts. That was Kashar and also Yanazovic. I think that's how you pronounce his name. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing those two in the team for next season. Maybe playing in the Champions League. How amazing would that be? But this game against Bochum. Really on paper, it should be a win for Borussia Mönchengladbach as we would head through to the semi-finals. They didn't get off to a good start. Their player lunging in with that challenge there. He even got sent off in the process. It was just a straight red. He didn't even receive a yellow card. And so early on in the game as well, kind of feel for their manager. And we was in a good position here for a free kick. A goal scoring opportunity 21 yards out. Now instead of having Hazard step up and take it, I, I decided to give it to Xhaka. He was the one that won it, right? And he's pretty decent at taking free kicks. Looking at his numbers there as I selected him. And I was aiming for that top left hand corner. Beat the wall, but we couldn't beat the keeper as the ball just smashed against the post. And you know, I was pretty happy that I had that free kick on target if you will hitting the post because normally in an in a position like that the free kick i just hammer them go for the knuckleball shot with the l1 circle but this time just kind of curled it around the wall and it hit the post so a bit happy shame it didn't go in obviously now with bocken being down to 10 men i was taken by massive surprise when they got the first goal of the game it's such a crucial goal to get as well in the dutch apocal in the quarterfinals, we couldn't lose this game, so we had to find a way, try and dig deep to get that equaliser. It was just a damn shame I had to concede because it was making my job harder trying to get to the semi-finals, and their manager must be so inspirational because in the second half as the players came out on the pitch, they just went hammer and tongs with just the first couple of minutes into that second half. He must have said something along the lines of, keep your call, cool, go find that second goal and we could be heading to the semis, just another step closer to the final. But as Santana made his run down the left wing, I was keeping my eye on the clock on the top left hand side of the screen and he's not a bad crosser of the ball. I mean, of all people, I was going all out attack and it just goes to show, you know, with Santana so far forwards, I might have to retrain him as a winger at this rate. And he just lifted the ball over the defence, pinpoint accuracy, found the head of Patrick Amann, who converted that cross into a goal, making it 1-1. And it was time for our super sub, Hagota came on, assisted Traore down the right side. He was through on goal, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. I really should have been putting that into the back of the net. No excuses. 74 minutes gone of the game. The only way I could break down Bochum was swinging in crosses like that from Corb. Found the head of a goater. He did score, but it was offside. He was just offside, as you'll see on the replay here. So, so very close, as you can see. Bit disappointing, really. And it's so true what, what they say when it comes to the domestic comp competitions like this. You know, league form certainly goes out of the window because Bochum were sensational in this game. I really thought I was playing maybe against Bayern Munich. I had they were really going for it. They were passing the ball around nice and fluid and they had a pretty high tempo to the uh, the game. But we found a three ball pass to Hagota who was just in front of the defence, stayed on side and he picked out that bottom right hand corner perfectly, the, the near post where the keeper was. And he is still my super sub. He is a talisman at the moment. He just cannot stop scoring. I mean, that what a goal that is. Great technique to just pick out that bottom corner. We could have made it 3-1 here. It should have been 3-1 with that uh, sweaty goal, but it just, just wasn't to be. And we did eventually turn the game around on its head, and we come away with a 2-1 win. Should have been better, really, against a lower league team like Bochum. And again, league form does tend to go completely out the window in domestic cup competitions like the uh, the Dutch of Pokal. We're through anyway to the semis and we're just another step closer to the final. I can't believe how well we've done, how, how well we've managed to turn games around so far this season. As you can see with the league table, um, as we prepared for our next game against Schalke, we're in fourth. 
three points behind Schalke, so that was a must-win game if we want to stay on track for that Champions League spot for next season. The draw for the semis for the uh, the Dutch Pokal have been made, and yes, yes, we've got to play Bayern Munich. I, I can't believe it. It's going to be so difficult to actually try and get to the final. It will be like a final in itself against Bayern Munich for that semi-final. Now, if you guys can recall my previous episodes, you'll remember I said something along the lines of, Hagota is amazing. I wonder what he'd be like alongside Cruiser up front. Well, for this game against Schalke, I decided to change up the formation slightly to the 4-4-2 uh, the diamonds, which meant that Cruiser would be working alongside Hagota. We would have uh, De Jong at the bottom of the diamonds. We've got Hazard at the top of that number 10 role, and Patrick Amman. And uh, I don't think I started Han for this game. I think it was Trey Ore. Those two were on the wings. And of course, of course, I had Santana as my captain at the back against his former side. What a game this was going to be. And yes, it was Trey Ore that I decided to start because Han hasn't, hasn't been performing too well as of late. Now, as you probably noticed with Schalke, they were going for the 5-3-2 formation. It's obviously been working out for them recently. They're in a good position in the league. They're in third, three points above us, and they were looking to extend that gap to six if, if they got that win. So it's like going to have to go all out. It's going to be difficult as well because it always is whenever you play away on FIFA 15 for some reason. Your players seem slow. They seem so sluggish. I'm not sure if any of you guys have noticed that. So I had to adapt. I had to try and think of ways that we could maybe grab a goal against Schalke. They've got a pretty tall team as well. So set pieces we had to try and avoid. So free kicks against us. Corners. It, it couldn't happen and I know it's so difficult to try and stop that from happening on FIFA 15 but we had to because Schalke would murder us if we weren't careful. We did however find the back of the net, it was the first goal of the game and it went to Borussia Mönchengladbach. I couldn't have been any more happier when Hagota scored that. He really just cannot stop scoring at the moment, he is such a talisman for this club and I think a real integral part of this team as we go forwards over the next couple of seasons. After that goal, we had so much confidence. You can see our passing, just going for the little trick passing, back heels here and there. It was beautiful, it was fluid, and that's just how I like it. We were really taking control of this game. We were almost embarrassing Schalke in front of their home fans. But when you're in that position, you have to be careful because a blowback is imminent and Schalke almost did get an equaliser in the first half. In the second, Patrick Amman came close. Well, I say close. It was more closer to the corner flag than the goal itself. But with Patrick Amman coming in at such a tight angle, I was hoping that maybe the ball could have curled around the keeper and found the, uh, the top corner because I've done it before on FIFA 15. And how about this? Kramer came so close to making it 2-0 there in the 89th minute. Why didn't it go in? That would have been so sweet. It was sweetly struck there. It was a feather of a touch from Kramer, but it wasn't enough to beat Schalke's keeper as he kept the game at 1-0. But unfortunately for Schalke's keeper, his team couldn't find an equaliser before that final whistle was blown, which means Borussia Mönchengladbach came away with three points with a 1-0 win over Schalke. And this is what the league table looks like after that game. We do move up to third. We've still got Schalke breathing down our necks very heavily as they're level on points with us, as well as Hanover. But look, we are just three points behind the league leaders, FC Bayern Munich. We could be in a better position. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.